It feels like a long time ago when we last spoke, when we did the first interview, but it's good to be back. Thank you very much again uh, for uh, coming and uh, uh, and uh, trying to tell what you have achieved and uh, what certifications that you have done uh, for your development. Yeah, no, my pleasure. I'm always happy to share the knowledge and I think some of the things I've learned, I wish I knew when I started learning about certifications. So I'm always happy to pass on what I've learned. So I can see you have done a lot of certifications. So before uh, uh, talking about it, can you please introduce uh, yourself to my new audience? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Keith Atherton. I'm a, a solutions architect and software developer for a Microsoft partner company called Quorum, and they're based in Edinburgh in Scotland. Uh, I've been a, a developer and sometimes architect for uh, over 20 years now, and I've worked uh, throughout the UK and uh, throughout the US as well. I've moved around a few times and worked in lots of different sectors uh, as well. And only fairly recently in my career, I've started looking into uh, certifications, mostly Microsoft certifications, and uh, I've certainly come across quite quite a few benefits uh, with them. So what was the first certification that you have done? Yeah, the first one I did uh, was uh, the Azure Fundamentals, uh, which is the AZ900 exam, uh, or AZ, if, uh, you know, depending how we pronounce it. Now, that was a starter point for me uh, that had been recommended by many other people, uh, such as Gregor Sotti and many other people who, who provide, you know, kind of uh, study guides and where you can get the learning materials. And it's something that I'd learned about, uh, you know, I, I'd heard of it, but I'd not got around to it for a long time. And I put it off for a few years and thought, I do want to learn more about Azure. I want to actually start using Azure as, uh, in my job as well. Uh, but it was something I didn't make time for. Uh, most of the roles I had before then, it wasn't using Azure or anything else that needed that certification. So it's quite easy for me to just, you know, put it off and put it off, uh, which is what I kept doing. So that was the very first one I did. Um, and since then, as I've gone along, I've actually come up with like a learning path for myself, you know, what next certification I want to go for. But that was my very first one. So how many certifications you have done and uh, what is your motivation? Who inspired you or uh, your job requirement made you to do so many certifications or is that your personal interest? Yeah, that, that has a good question, because for me, it was a mix of the, the personal interest uh, and also I wanted to study things. Uh, I always like learning anyway, but I did want to learn something that I would use in a job. And when I first started with certifications, it was mostly to start using Azure. That was my main focus. I mean, AWS is fantastic uh, and Azure, you know, they've, they've got so many great features. But mostly working with Microsoft tools, I thought Azure would be a good starting point. I thought I would start there, um, but I wasn't using it in the current role that I had. And there was no scope that they would likely uh, bring Azure into that job. So I thought, well, if I learn it, I might try and uh, see if I can bring it into that role and show it to my manager and say, look, here are some benefits. How about we evaluate it and try it? Or the other option, uh, which is what ended up happening, is that I actually left that role and found a role where I could use these skills. So getting that certification positioned me well to get the role that I wanted to do, which is to use those skills. Um, so what I've done so far is I did that AZ900, which was the Azure Fundamentals, which I would recommend to to uh, you know anyone who's looking to get started, particularly with Azure. Uh, and that was... Uh, kind of inspired by Gregor Sotti and many other people who help people with certifications to say, look, if you're going to get started, here's a good starting point and here's where you can take it next. So there were many people who shared those study resources uh, that, that got me interested to go for that first one. So how many you did? So, so far, I've got seven uh, of the Microsoft fundamental certifications. Uh, I'm looking to add them. I'm currently studying for one more fundamental. Uh, so just a bit of background with the Microsoft ones. And again, many other vendors like AWS, uh, VMware, Cisco, many companies offer certifications. It's not just Microsoft. Me personally, I work for Microsoft uh, Gold Partner, 
and part of having that partnership is having people with certifications but also i have the personal interest to use them learn them and use those skills as well so i'm happy they're happy um so i will add to the collection so for me the approach i've done and my my personal choice is to study many of the fundamentals because as an architect and designer i like to know what tools are available what i can use and also when i talk to other teams like security specialists i know what they refer to when they use different jargon or different acronyms at least i've got the basic understanding so i've deliberately got all of the fundamentals which is really the basic uh, certifications the next level is associate which is almost like a, a medium level and then above that is the expert and some specialist level ones as well so my aim is to get all of the fundamentals there's one more on my list then after that i would target mostly azure and power platform which are my two main focuses and i'll actually work through towards the expert levels on those two that's my personal approach so associate level and uh, professional level so what are those so yeah the different levels certainly with the microsoft ones uh, so fundamentals is is almost like beginners to, to understand the concepts uh, then when you look at the associate level and the expert level those two there they're known as uh, the role based certifications and they're really if you want to do that job or you are currently doing a job let's say you want to be a data scientist or a developer or an administrator there are certain certifications that are good fits for those roles and again for me i was studying for the role that i wanted to do it wasn't the role i was currently doing but if you're currently doing it it can expand your skills as well so yeah i i would recommend and i'm looking forward to going to the associate and then the expert levels for for the the areas i'm interested in so can you name the certifications that you did yeah sure thing um i'll just bring these uh so up for me so some of the ones i've done are azure fundamentals that was the very first one uh, i've done the azure ai fundamentals that's something i have a personal interest in with uh, ai and machine learning as well um azure data fundamentals um so they're all part of the the, the azure remit uh, power platform fundamentals and that's something i'm using often and i actually architect solutions with power platform so that that's been a very useful one which i'm looking to uh improve upon and and get some higher level power platform um you know certifications down the line i've got security compliance and identity fundamentals which is all around the security area and recently i got two certifications for dynamics 365 so one was for erp and one was for crm um so again that was good to get an understanding of what products are available with with dynamics 365 so you you did certifications in completely in different platforms ai ai ml and uh, data related thing and the security how much time it took for you to prepare uh, yourself for uh, the the 20 years of your technical experience made you to do the certifications faster or easier yeah that's a, that's a really good question i've i've kind of refined my process as i've gone along so when i took the very first one which was the azure fundamentals i hadn't studied for a long time uh, when i went to university that was many years ago and it wasn't even it uh, so when i did that i thought okay i've i've not done exams for a long time what do i do so i looked at other people's study guides uh, other people's advice of how they studied um the one of the main things i used was microsoft learn uh, which is just a great free online resource where you can learn specifically towards a certification they tell you exactly what you need to know sometimes you get labs where you can actually spin up things and have a go and have a play with them um another thing i did was actually use those skills so i just went into the azure portal ended up just creating things and playing with them just to get familiar with them um and again for that first certification i went quite over the top because i didn't know how difficult the exam would be so i bought a course on udemy and again there's other great places like linkedin learning is a favorite for me plural site as well so i bought a udemy course i did microsoft learn and i think i found a few good videos on youtube as well just to prepare me for the exam and that initial exam i maybe spent 4 weeks prepping for that one took the exam i had a a good pass a comfortable pass i was very happy pass first time very lucky um 
but since then I've realized certainly for the fundamental exams for me personally I've not had to spend as much time it's maybe been two weeks maybe study for an hour a day all the way through Microsoft Learn if I can find an extra uh, course on LinkedIn Learning uh, that tends to be my favorite or YouTube um, that can be useful as well so if I can do a couple of different approaches to learn then take the exam uh, that's been enough for me so far to pass so why you want to learn different things so yeah that, that's a great question um the the reason i i like to learn the different things is when i when i design a new solution or i've got a client that comes to us and they say look we, we've got this but we want it to do that or we need a brand new system sometimes they can ask for anything so i if i find that i've got this good uh, kind of broad coverage of the fundamentals at least to understand what is possible um, and that even happened yesterday I was studying for my next exam and I was learning new things like I didn't know anything about this particular thing it opened my eyes to it so if a customer comes to me and say oh, I really want this and I'm not aware of it I might design something over engineered or something as a workaround not knowing that that's actually possible somewhere else so the reason I took the fund fundamentals to, you know, to get to get this broad scope is to say, I, OK, I know what is an option. Uh, I might not know it all at the front of my mind when I speak with a customer, but I can always go away and think, oh, I, I've read about something that could be useful for them. I'll just go away and, and refresh my memory on it and see if it is a good fit for them. But knowing about that tool is, is the main thing for me. I need to know what is possible, what's in my toolbox. Uh, is it, it it is important for you to have an open mind to go uh, into completely a new thing uh, uh, from the thing that you have already expert in so uh, where this mindset came from for you is that the practical or the real experiences or the clients that you interact on the problems that you see in the real world that that is is that the driving force to do the certifications yeah, that is a big part. I mean, selfishly, I just like to learn anyway. I like to expand my skills. Um, the main thing is to use it within the job or again, the job you're aiming for. So let's say you're a developer, but want to become an architect or you're a junior developer, but you want to you know, get a promotion. You want to be mid or senior. Um, these things will all help because, you know, the tools in the box. I always like helping other people. So having that knowledge means that if people come to me for advice, I'm in a good place to be able to give them advice or say, well, look, I, I know basics on this, but I can learn more and we can we can work together and, and fix something. But, but you're right. One of the biggest things is if a client comes to me and say, look, I, I've got this, but it's not working right. Or I want something brand new created. Can you help create it? And as you say, having that open mind uh, and that connects then to, OK, what other tools are available within Microsoft? But also it could be open minded to say, OK, they're already using, say, AWS. OK, what, what does AWS have? Just keep an, an open mind in general to say we might be able to modify or extend what they currently have. Or they might come to us with a blank page and say, OK, what can you create for us? And then I could say, OK, great. I've learned enough. I think we need to look into this. And then having that open mind means that I'm not too rigid to say it has to be this particular tool or this type of database. They might say, OK, we want a brand new system that is much more performant. And I might decide maybe a different database type is a better fit for them. And that's something I've had with a customer before. We've gone with a flexible server instead of a single server approach because it's more elastic. It can deal with high loads, high volumes. But again, it's only because I've understood and studied for this, that I've understood that's even an option. So yeah, open mind is key. Uh, you are an, you're a software architect then. And uh, what is the use of uh, doing Microsoft Azure certifications? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, say again. Sorry. Uh, you are you are a software architect and uh, you have uh, technology experience about 20 plus years. You you know how software works and you know the connectivity between things and what are the things uh, which are needed to make uh, 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 a, a project or uh, a business uh, uh, a, a business thing. So how these Microsoft uh, Azure certifications that you have done is helping you uh, to do whatever you're doing. Yeah, th yeah, thank you. Um, 
so it really helps. I think one of the biggest things is having that knowledge of, of what options are possible, where sometimes, you know, if, if you don't know they're possible, it might take more research when a client comes to you and, and says, OK, we need a system to do X, Y and Z. Um, already having that starting point of, OK, I've studied some of this. I've got some ideas already. And sometimes having that conversation with the client straight away, I can even be you know, uh, drafting a design or an idea in my head of this might work. OK, I've got two, three options. Let me talk with the client right now. How about using this? Or oh, we tried that didn't work. Or how about using that? Oh, yeah, we already have something like that. Maybe it can connect. So having that knowledge ready to go is, is really, really useful. On the Microsoft website as well, in terms of, you know, the, the way they promote the certifications, and I'm sure other vendors do this as well, they do say, well, if you take a certification, there are many benefits, such as you've got more confidence in the role that you do because you've studied, you've learned, you've got these new skills. Just like if you studied for something at college or school, you know, it's like you, you know, you've got that to, to draw upon. Um, but sometimes there are other benefits with certifications that they'll quote to say, well, this many people now got promoted because they have a certification or this many people like me got a new job doing what they wanted because they have a certification which proves, you know, this person has studied this thing. They must know something about this. So we've got confidence hiring someone with those skills. Um, so, yeah, there, there can be lots of benefits. I find really the biggest cost for me is the time to study for them is really the biggest cost. The exam cost is often not too expensive, luckily. Sometimes you can get free vouchers as well. But the biggest thing is the time. The rest, it will look good for your job. It will look good on LinkedIn. It will look good on your CV or your resume as well, let's be honest. So there are many, many benefits. Uh, you are a full-time worker. How you are able to adjust your time and upskill yourself? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good one. Um, really important as well. The, the way I've been trying to do it so far is I'll study for, as you say, I work full time Monday to Friday. I, I work throughout the, the days. It's a typical nine to five type of job. So for me, I have to learn mostly on my free time, which is evenings and weekends. I've got an amount of time most days that I'm happy to spend learning on these. It can be an hour a day. If I have a quiet evening, it might be a bit more. But if I do a little bit very often, I can then work away. I do know some other people who will just have an empty weekend and just do, mo you know, lots of study at the weekend because they've got the free time. Um, so I've got something where I'll spend a few weeks, take the exam. And then I'll always have like a week or two in between just to have some downtime, no study, just to just to rest and catch up on some other things before I then study for the very next one. Um, so that's an approach that works well for me. I would say as well that, you know, if you have lots of commitments, if you're a carer for someone or you have dependents or children or you have something that takes up a lot of your time, it might be difficult to make that time. So. You know, it's purely what works for everyone. Everyone's different. It might be that you learn some on your lunch break or in the morning before you start work or if you have a break during the work day um, or, you know, it's every other evening. It really I think it really is personal to everyone. You know what works well for them. Uh, you are an expert. You know already how things work uh, because you are into uh, this work from a long time in your life. So how this Whatever the certification that you have done, how a newcomer like me uh, or who are like wanted to do certifications and uh, wanted to improve themselves, how they have to start, what advice you give to them? Because uh, they know nothing how things work. They don't have real time experience. They know they didn't see how things work in the industry. You know, it is uh, uh, you sometimes you can be your own guide and you can uh, find uh, uh, solutions for for the problems because of uh, the the experience. How uh, a newcomers can able to do these certifications that you did? Yeah, that, that's really uh, that, that's really interesting because I found with these fundamentals uh, exams again, there's different tiers of exams that we have. The good thing with the fundamentals are really aimed at people who are starting. You know, you can go in with no knowledge or minimal knowledge. And really, those exams are really aimed for people who want to understand the concepts. 
you know, it's not hands on writing lots of code and creating solutions that all communicate with everything. They really are, you know, understand the cost benefits of using cloud computing. Um, what options are available within Azure, you know, so that they're learning material for free uh, in Microsoft Learn, which will say, you know, here are the options available within Azure. That's all the fundamentals are really designed for is understanding those concepts. So luckily, if you were brand new to this, it, it, it really is a good starting point. And it really feels only when you take the levels above the associate and the expert level ones and, and the other ones are, that are above like specialist, they, they are more designed for people who are hands on using those technologies. You know, they're actually using it as a job or they're using it as a hobby or they're studying. So I'd say the fundamentals are luckily a really good starting point, even if you're starting from scratch with no knowledge, uh, I would recommend them. So security data and uh, AI, all are different aspects that you touch. Uh, so tell me some experiences while you are doing these certifications that you have faced or the struggles or the challenges. Yeah, there have been plenty. Yeah, <laughs> there have been uh, good times and bad times for sure. Um, I think luckily the learning materials with Microsoft Learn and there's so many great courses out there as well and good blogs and YouTube videos that there's so many, there's so much information for free or quite affordable. Again, depends on your circumstances um, that really made the learning journey quite easy for everything I've done so far. Um, I expect it might get more challenging when I take when I look into the associate and the expert levels. But that's one reason why I started to give a few presentations is because I was new to certifications. So when I passed only one or two of them, I wanted to share that experience with others, you know, like, like we're doing today. And I did find that one of the easy things was finding Microsoft Learn. All the materials were there where a few years ago it wasn't quite as available. It wasn't quite as mature as it is now. So I believe it was it was more difficult in years, years ago. Some of the I think some of the challenging things I've come across so far is if it's a brand new concept for me. So when I was doing some things with, uh, let's say, the uh, AI, you know, luckily I knew a few basics, but there's a few things in terms of like the algorithms they might use. And again, the fundamentals doesn't get too in depth with this kind of thing. But when I was trying to understand when they mentioned the statistics or the models they use. Uh, so much of that was brand new. I had to read it several times just to understand it. You know, just to say, you know, how does that work again? Or again, when I looked at a YouTube video or somebody, someone else sharing that knowledge, sometimes the way they worded it or their different perspective helped in my mind connect the dots. Like, oh, oh I see what's happening now. OK, they mean it like this. So combining two, three different teachers really sometimes helped me fill in a gap if I had the gap. So that was one of the main things. Um, another good thing with Microsoft Learn on, on occasion, they do actually give you like a free test lab, or it used to be anyway, where you could actually open it and there would be step-by-step -step instructions to follow along and use the services as well. So instead of just reading or just watching videos, you can actually have a go. You can try and learn and try and use it yourself and find, oh, okay, again, it, it might help it click oh, I know what they mean now because I'm actually using it for real. So I think that's it in terms of the technical and the learning. The biggest challenge for me, which you, you've, you've mentioned already, which is a great question, which is actually making the time. Luckily, I have the motivation. Most of the time, I don't struggle too much, but it's actually making time. If we have, you know, have a busy evening or you have plans or, again, you have family commitments or caring commitments, then it could be, oh, I'm busy three evenings in a row. I'm busy all day at work. I just can't make time. And, and I think that's the biggest thing of I'm still trying to improve that for me is to say, even if it's a small amount of time, it's better than no time. Can I fit 10 minutes on my lunch break? Can I get up half an hour early before I start work and try and get some time in there? So it's uh, I think making time is the biggest challenge for me. Uh, Microsoft Azure uh, is the uh, second largest uh, cloud uh, in the in the in the industry uh, in the world. So, uh, and you are doing uh, so many certifications uh, uh, to to make things possible uh, in it. So, and also your your experience in technology uh, also, like you said, uh, that is uh, making you do these things. So, how Microsoft is thinking and uh, 
telling the world to upskill themselves using these certifications what exactly microsoft intention is yeah that's a good question you know i'd love to know the full strategy behind it um i think again like other vendors like aws again they are the market leader uh you know i believe they still have the highest market share but there's also uh you know it's not just cloud computing there's also cisco and vmware um and many others uh you know that provide these certifications so i would guess that most of them have the mindset of if they provide this learning this would get people like me and many others using it and becoming an advocate of that technology because we we use it we like it uh, for me i've gone uh, so a bit of background i use mostly microsoft technology over my career i've used lots of others i've used java oracle uh, many other different languages and technologies uh, you know objective c ios all kinds but for the primarily you know primarily it's been microsoft technologies so for me going with azure and many of the jobs that use microsoft technologies whether it be .net or azure or power platform microsoft certifications were a good fit for me but it may be different for you i i know you're an aws expert and that, you know many other people are i mean it's they've got great tools and there's so many comparable features and services that really i i think if it was cloud computing in general you would do well learning either you know there's so many benefits <clears throat> but i think I would imagine if I was one of those vendors uh, if if you offered certifications it shows a bit more credibility in the in the services that they offer because you know you can get a certificate say I've studied and passed this you would get people like me and other people learn them uh, actually use them in the job or advocate for them in the community which you know you and I do we actually speak in the community say hey here's a cool new feature this new you know uh, re release wave has just been announced you know let's check this out uh or given presentations like this to share the knowledge for them as well um many of them will charge for the exams sometimes you know uh, you know it will expire after one two years and you need to pay to take it again or with microsoft renewals are actually free uh, currently but with some of them you still you know they did used to be with microsoft you would get a two year expiry let's say you need to pay and take the full exam again so if you wanted to stay renewed you have to pay every two years and keep taking it until you pass um with other vendors they may do that too so let's be honest that's a source of revenue as well that's money going into the company um and it also you know just helps them uh, you know pub uh, you know publicize about their products and features as well you know this has changed so we've changed the exam we've changed the certification if you want to stay up to date there are new features that you need to learn so i think there are many benefits for them doing that uh, as well but again there are many benefits for us as well we for me i love learning new things i'm always learning new things um it helps me reinforce that knowledge if i've learned it well enough that i can pass an exam with it so that's a bit of confidence for me of okay i know what i'm talking about you know i've not just skimmed just the parts i need or just cherry picked the two features i've need uh, you know i need for this project i've actually learned enough about say data fundamentals i know quite thoroughly you know what is required for this so yeah i think there are many benefits for sure so every time when you do something you want to know what you are doing exactly right yeah it just gives that confidence and that level of knowledge that i understand what this means i understand what's available again sometimes i refer to the metaphor of you know the toolbox you know if if i know oh I, you know there's these five things i can do with this type of database great i may never use all five of them or i might not use them for the next year or two but just knowing it's available if a customer comes to me and say i really need this specific thing is it possible i might be able to then recall from my memory oh i did read that it was a long time ago i'll go ahead and refresh my memory yep you can do this here's the cost here's how it works here's what we can do with it so again just having that knowledge is really useful for me so maybe this is one of the reasons why you are a great architect <laughs> thanks well i'm always improving i always like to think i'm improving and you know if i keep studying and learning one it keeps the skills up to date but often you know i learn new things that i didn't know before and again sometimes i've actually developed an app as a developer and then learned afterwards there's something that already exists that could have done that job and i could have just bought it 
or it may be free and I may have just been able to plug it in and configure it and it maybe would have taken me half a day but I've maybe spent a week or more designing it from scratch so I was like okay knowledge is key there if I'd known that I wouldn't have spent the time building something from scratch from a blank page there's already something out there that's probably better than what I've created and it's just ready to go much quicker so yeah it's 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 just adding to the skill set uh, in our previous conversation you said it is important uh, uh, for you uh, uh, to understand uh, the business side of the technology at the same time how to talk with a computer so now with these certifications you are learning how to communicate and connect and do things with a lifeless machine called computer and also you are, as an architect you are interacting with different people and uh, you said this is your interest and uh, it's it's uh, you you love talking with people and uh, doing that so business side of the technology you can understand you can do you can uh, pu- uh, gather all the things uh, and uh, put it together and uh, create an architecture which suits for the requirement of the client or, or the company and at the same time you are doing this uh, you are learning uh, 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 how to do things with inside the machine so what do you how do you uh, say about yourself of uh, these two persons in you yeah that's that's a good one yeah as you say we discussed before and you know i think i think you know maybe with yourself as well being a people person i like meeting new people i like helping people and, and you know um interacting with people as well it's not just all about the code or the design for me that's a big part in fact it's often the the, the key part because you can then assess what their technical level is. Do they already have that type of database or this type of system that you can then integrate with or connect with or extend instead of just creating something brand new every time? Or, you know, are they happy using what they're using? Do they want a replacement? They, they, they do have something, but they're not happy with it. Okay, maybe we can replace with this or this. You know, it's really key to seeing what's going to help them and their organization achieve their goals. That, that's always something I look for as, a, as an architect or a designer. It's key. It's key before any other, you know, what code do I need to write for this? It could be they already have it. They just need training in it. You know, it could, it could be anything. But yeah, in terms of the two personalities, I do find the certifications can help with this. Again, I learn not just certifications or the things too many of us do you know we listen to podcasts like yours we we read blogs we we look at articles online stack overflow whatever the case is i find that again learning these things with the certifications particularly with the microsoft ones I, i'm sure aws and the others are also very good but many of them for the microsoft are now role based so again as we mentioned briefly earlier this is you know if you want to be a data scientist or an administrator or a database administrator these certifications are really based around that role the things you're likely to do in the role and the technologies you're likely to use now this is quite different from a few years ago where microsoft and some of the vendors would have their certifications that were going to be product based so it would be say hey you want to pass a certification with sql server or windows server they were very specific to those products but uh, i believe in recent years microsoft have changed that to make it role based say hey if you want to be a data scientist you might be using several of these systems and here's how you would typically use them here's the algorithms you may typically use you know here's when you would choose this database instead of this one so that that's great that helps both of the personalities of i know what systems there are but i know when to choose which system as well so it, it can help both so how does uh, microsoft azure services are helping human being because you are doing certifications and you are knowing how things works uh, in uh, different aspects of the azure security artificial intelligence uh, machine learning so you are kind of you are trying to understand uh, all the things uh, uh, you are interested because uh, you you want to learn so how uh, these things uh, uh, are helping these services and uh in in what in what aspect in what situation these services are used yeah yeah that's true actually so just another quick note on there is that some of these certifications have an overlap as well which could be useful um so let's say at the power platform there is some overlap with power apps and power platform and the dataverse that overlaps with dynamics 365 
So sometimes taking those certifications around the same time covers some of the same modules or some of the, the same services to different extents. So that could be another benefit when you learn. If you take some together that are related, it might still be fresh in your mind and they might, again, connect quite well. So that's another thing that's useful for architecture as well as the learning. But in terms of helping people, yeah, as you say, when, when dealing with clients, knowing what tools are available are really, really useful, but it's really what addresses their needs. So, you know, whether it's a client, let's say they have a website that gets lots of traffic, they need to know how to cope with that traffic instead of going slow or going offline. Again, learning for, for the certification, whether you take the exam or not, actually, you could just study. You don't need to you don't need to take the exam. Uh, you do if you want to pass a certification, but even just learning it is useful to understand what is available, what might be a good fit for them. So it could just be depending on their needs. You know, we need something that can cope with big spikes in traffic on a website, you know, or a database that can handle very large volumes of data, or it's going to be used for, you know, analysis or data analytics. That's really when it helps the people because it's going to help the people do their job or help the business uh, with a website that copes with high demand, let's say. So I think it really is just understanding what the client needs or the organization or your organization. You know, for me, I'm a consultant, so I work mostly with external clients. But if you work somewhere and you want your company to perform better or you know, a website to be more cost effective or to deal with high demand or be more reliable. Um, learning those skills will help the organization, the people who use those tools and services, uh, you know, to use them most effectively. So by, by giving the practical examples or the experiences that you have, uh, the, the how these certifications are uh, helpful to solve any business problems. Yeah, let me see. So in terms of an example, I think maybe the one there about a website, uh, let's say if I was, uh, you know, I, I did have a project where there was a website that actually did suffer from um, uh, outages and it used to go slow if there was high levels of traffic going to the site. Um, there are many different things within Azure. Again, AWS, GCP, uh, you, many of the other cloud computing platforms have similar services. <clears throat> but in this in this instance, one of them was uh, optimizing the database, optimizing some of the queries. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, again, this could be in the data fundamentals. Here are the database options available within Azure. They already had one in this instance, but if they were starting new, if they had uh, one that wasn't performant, then I might be able to look to say, well, look, here's one that's high performance. It might likely have a higher cost as well, which you can estimate within Azure and again, many other tools. Um, so it's useful to say, OK, here's how we can optimize. Maybe, you know, there's a lot of data here. Maybe we could archive most of the old data we don't currently use to somewhere else and just keep the relevant data that we have there. So it's much faster to interact with. OK, maybe we could use a faster connection. We could look at networking. Uh, we could look at using something within Azure where you could actually spin up replicas or maybe we'll consider microservices, which, again, not just not just Azure, many others offer, you know, uh, options, whether it be like Azure Container Service or Kubernetes, you know, making it cloud native and making it, um, you know, scale out as needed for that type of traffic that they get. So sometimes it's things like this to improve performance or one might be, hey, we've got really old database. We need to move to a new one. The old one's difficult to maintain. It's hosted in Linux. We don't know Linux. What can we do? OK, here's one we can use, maybe uh, a platform as a service. We can use this and put it there. So it, it means they don't need to maintain a server. You know, it's just they pay for what they use. They can forget forget about it mostly. It will just auto back up. You know, knowing those things makes makes their life easier. So you are saying that these certifications are like a store in which there are different products and services if you uh, are uh, uh, aware of uh, how things work and uh, doing these certifications, it is very easy for you to sell uh, sell your skills uh, or skill set to the to the companies or the clients who needs who needs or who want uh, a product or a service uh, to be developed. Yeah, yeah, that's true. To be honest, it, I imagine it would give others confidence in that. You know, I've 
if I've passed a certification, it does demonstrate that I've um, been able to, uh, you know, <clears throat> understand these things well enough to pass a certification with it. Uh, I think importantly for me as well, it gives me confidence again that I've learned enough. I, you know, I've learned it well enough that I've been confident enough to take an exam, pass it and gain, a, you know, earn a certification with it as well. So if I do speak with a client, I don't think of, I don't know, uh, I'll need to Google everything. I'll need to look everything up. I do have that skill set as long as I keep it renewed, you know, as long as I kind of keep on top of it, keep up to date with what comes out. Um, and, and that certification is, you know, it's active. I can go and say, well, actually, I do know my stuff with this one. I, I do know a lot. I do know options available. I won't know it all. No one's perfect. There's sometimes just too much to learn. But I know what the options are from a very high level, certainly with fundamentals. And then if I need to drill deeper, OK, I need this, you know, I think we might need this type of data, database, let's say. So I took the data fundamentals. So a concrete example would be we need a database for a brand new system, which would you choose? OK, what are your requirements? OK, here's the handful of options. I think this one. OK, does it need to have certain types of performance? Does it need to scale out? OK, I'll choose this one. How many cores do we need? Uh, you know, what's the budget? What can we afford on a monthly subscription, for example? So having having this knowledge lets me have a good starting point and then I can do lots more research separately to say, what more specific, what options are available? You know, uh, how do we back it up? You know, what options are available? So, yeah, I think having things like that, that's probably more of a concrete example of knowing that. And again, because I've taken other certifications, other fundamentals, I know sometimes, OK, well, I picked a database, but what about security? OK, well, luckily I've done the security fundamentals. I might be able to combine those two because I'm designing a whole system here so they, they could work together really, really well. Uh, there, there must be a strong reason for you to become uh, or be a, a constant learner and uh, go deeper into the subject and uh, uh, dig deeper into the tools and uh, services. So what is that reason for you to be a uh, eye opener every time? Yeah, I think it might depend on the personality. So for me, I was like learning new things and it could be technology things or non-technology things, you know, whether I'm playing the guitar or being an artist or an illustrator. Like I just like to do lots of different things. I like to learn. It's something that always drives me. I always find it really, really interesting. So for me, I do like learning anyway. So this is great. You know, it's going to help my job, uh, maybe my career, but I like to learn anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I think just when I see the benefits, like learning anything, you know, when you, when you learn more, OK, I, I'm aware of what the options are when I speak to someone. I've got more confidence that I'm not wasting my time creating something that already exists. Uh, again, I won't know it all. I never will. Uh, no one can. There's just too much. But knowing the options are there, again, might help me save a lot of time or save money or give someone a solution that is is already strong. You know, there's already something that doesn't need to be created from from you that might take days or weeks or months it might be hey you just need to pay so much a month for this service it already exists so seeing those benefits is another motivation for me so if i work on a side project just for a bit of fun i'm learning something new as a hobby or i make a silly website or i just want to play around with something or if i make a game i you know sometimes i do game development which i enjoy and it's 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 distanced enough from the the day to day business software that I typically work on. <clears throat> Again, I'm able to sort of use those skills and learn new things and play with things. And it's almost like a toy. You know, you can play with things and, and experiment and try new things. So, again, if I learn those, uh, you know, learn what is uh, possible, I'm able to then put it into practice. Uh, and that's something I really enjoy. Uh, do you feel uh, stressful uh, doing these certifications? I've been lucky so far. I think for the first one I did, the Azure Fundamentals, I did feel the pressure because it had been so long since I'd taken an exam. It had been years. Um, I'd been aware of certifications ever since my first job. But to be honest, I was able to do most of my career without having the certification um in, in anything i was able to learn on the job or do training courses that my employer provided so I was, I was able to do them so for many years i didn't take any certifications but also i knew i wasn't really pushing myself as much as i could 
but also maybe not doing the role that I wanted to be doing. And as soon as I started to take them, it elevated everything. It, it increased my confidence. I genuinely felt I could design better systems. I had so many more tools that I could use uh, from the toolbox. Um, so that confidence, that, that gave me positive encouragement to keep doing it and build upon it, which I'm still doing. Um, but yeah, again, to the, the first one, I felt the pressure because it's been so long since I studied, taking an exam. You know, I hope I do well. Um, luckily, with these fundamentals, uh, you get the answer straight away. It's normally within a few minutes of taking the exam. So, you know, straight away, do you need to retake or have you passed? You know, so that that's nice to know. But to be honest, after taking the first one, I still feel the pressure that I need to learn enough to be ready to take the exam. But luckily, you know, if you're disciplined, if you can find the time, if you're lucky enough to make the time um, available and you're able to do that uh, besides your other life commitments, as long as you go into the exam knowing I've studied enough, I'm ready for this. Um, just go in with confidence. That's what I always do. And I just, you know, there's some nerves with an exam, but luckily for me personally, and I think it's different for everyone. I'm able to sort of move those nerves to the side, say, well, I've got confidence because I've read this. I've tried this. I've used it. I've I've studied from one, two, three different places. I'm confident and I'm ready to take this exam. Another option is if you're not confident or you, you're really nervous, you could always bump it by another week or two and do some more learning. You know, I, I did, did that recently when I... Um, I had a very busy week. I did no learning. I thought I'm not ready for the exam. I just pushed it another week away to give myself another week. So instead of going really, really worried, really anxious, bumping it by one week, got rid of that intimidation. It helped me feel more confident. OK, I've got another week to play catch up with my studying. Then I'll be ready. Um, but if anyone does struggle and it's perfectly normal to get stressed uh, and anxious with exams, you know, there are many good guides out there I've come across where, you know, how to come up with a study plan, speak to people if you feel under pressure, if you're getting nervous or stressed, you know, if you can open up to someone, uh, you know, a loved one, a family member and just discuss with them uh, because, you know, your mental health is really key. It's the most important thing, more important than these technical exams, in my opinion. So as long as you're comfortable, happy and you've got support, uh, Try and look online. There's plenty of really good materials out there um, just to make sure you don't worry too much when you take the exam. So if you remove the uh, certification that you have done uh, as a software architect, so tell me about your what would be your working style or the way you work? And I'm asking this question because uh, I want my audience to know how important and uh, how your certifications are contributing to you to be a great uh, uh, professional or expert. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, so I think for many years, again, before certifications and again, you know, whether it's certifications or not, or whether you just like to learn, you don't always need the badge. You don't always need to take the exams. Just learning is key. Learning is the, the key thing, really. Certification, again, it's useful for uh, me personally to show on a CV or a, a LinkedIn, you know, a I've got this, I've achieved this, but also for me to have confidence of, oh, remember, you've learned a lot, enough that you've passed the exam in this. So you do know it well enough that you can either teach it or share it with others or use it when I deal with a, a client. So if I'm consulting with a client, say, well, I've not just Googled one or two options here. I've actually had to study and learn all of the options so I know what the best fit is. Um, now, in terms of day to day for me, so again, certifications are a good grounding for my knowledge. That's the biggest thing is it's now on the skill set of I've understood this. And in many cases, uh, many cases, I've actually used it as well. That, that's the you know, learning and doing are two completely different things. So learning, it's great to know what is possible, but actually doing it for a side project, a hobby or just creating a proof of concept or a prototype means I've actually used it. I know how it works. I know the good things, the bad things, the bugs, the flaws. I've started to you know get hands on. And, and any time I design a system for a client, I have to have that hands on knowledge. I have to have used it. You know, knowing what's possible is great, but then I'll be very targeted, say, I need this feature with this turned on. Let me use it first. Only when I'm happy with it, I can then recommend to a client. That's a good option to use because I, I really do understand it more thoroughly. So if I was going for a day to day, let's say if a client came to me and said, OK, I need a brand new system. Uh, I need a website with a database and 
I won't get into too much detail, but we need something. You know, you might be a startup with no system, or you might be a, a company that's using it in Excel at the moment, but they need, they want an app, they want something a bit more slick. I would actually draw upon that knowledge of these certifications, um, you know, and, and any other learning I've done throughout my career. You know, I'd likely look up other options as well, because again, the, these materials within AWS, Azure, and many other places, they mature, they they mature and they grow and they change over time as well. Some things get um, uh, sort of retired and they're no longer used. New services come in, some get combined. So again, keeping that knowledge up to date is really key as well. So for me, if I've got that up to date knowledge, I, I sometimes get ideas immediately, like you know, a, an intuition of what might be a good fit. There may be several options as well. So for me, it could just be, uh, it could just be pen and paper. I might just use a notepad of, okay, how would this look? What options have I got to play with? Okay, there might be three options. Then when I look into those options, I'll actually try and learn more from the client. Again, just get a connection with them and say, okay, what are you looking for? Is there anything not working well at the moment? What can we improve? And that might help me make a short list of these options. Okay, they need this, so it can't be option A. Okay, they need that. Okay, so it may be B or C. And I start to then refine these options. And then it's when I refine them, we just start to naturally flesh out that design and just kind of, um, you know, make it more substantial. So just say, okay, I think we need this, this, and this. Then I'll we'll have back and forth with a with a client. Let's say to say I think we could use it. This this will run in a web browser. Does that work well? Is it mostly PCs to use? Do you want to use it on the move with a tablet or a phone? You know, it's like the more I learn, the more it helps me uh, define what that design would be. And then when I do, I just try and improve on the design. If I need to then do more learning, which I likely would need to do. Again, it's not all from the certification. It's being hands on as well. You know, um, just doing a bit more reading up on it. What options are available? What charges uh, will there be with it as well? That can affect a customer's decision. And then really working with them, you know, to sort of refine it to get to, the, okay, this is what we need. And then actually doing the work to build that for them. So you said uh, you will connect the dots. Uh, 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 in order to make things uh, possible. So how that uh, uh, thinking uh, happens or is that the practice that you have done or it is a natural flow of your mindset that whenever you see you relate this with that one, uh, you, you you try to connect with that one and try to able to eventually to solve the problem because you are an architect, it's connecting dots. So. I, I want you to give answer for this question because uh, I don't think in uh, anywhere you might have given answer for this question because uh, it is very internal thing that only that skill that skill that only you have or you understood or you feel like uh, that is an asset for you that is making you to uh, know about how things work internally in the software. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, as you say, I do have many years to draw upon, many years of experience. And to be honest, you're right, that that's helped me in recent years connect the dots because I'm already aware of what databases can do, what different types there are, different ways we can host a website, um, what that might look like, the different types of websites, you know, is it a static one? Is it, you know, uh, what's involved with it? So, so you, you know, you're absolutely correct in the, for me, one thing I've done over the years is work for many different sectors. So I've worked for, uh, you know, manufacturing, retail, uh, game development, uh, finance, lots of finance. So sometimes I'm able to actually take ideas from one sector and apply it to the one I'm working with now. Uh, you know, sometimes some advanced uh, design patterns I've learned with game development could actually be useful in retail in different places. It, it's funny that it's just this accumulated experience over the years uh, in different roles, different countries as well, is actually just being able to combine. And that really does, that really does feed into when I architect a system as well. So you're absolutely right. That That is a big key that I've got. And I've always liked the variety as well, which goes back to learning lots of different things. Is it actually has paid off in ways I didn't realize, you know, that, that thing I learned in manufacturing could be useful for this finance project. But again, that just comes with time. That comes with being hands on. But also I found with learning for certifications, even if it's not just the certifications I've learned so far, it's just the fact that I'm learning new things and learning them often. It means that I'm I'm 
growing more and I'm pushing the boundaries and I'm learning new things. And sometimes I'll read up on a certification and say, I don't know what that means. You know, so I'll actually go away and do a separate search to learn what that thing is. And, this, you know, that might branch off and branch off. Um, so even that's helping me learn new things I wouldn't have learned if I wasn't going for a certification. Um, so, yeah, to be honest, learning all those things helps me connect dots because it, it, it means that I'm aware of some things that I've seen work. There's some things that I've only read about and now I can connect and see can they work together. Um, and another thing I should give credit for is really other people, again, sharing their knowledge. Um, I was working on something last week with uh, Power BI, uh, what, you know, uh, the, the, the reporting system there. I've done some certifications, but I'd not used some of it very hands on. I spoke to an expert who works in the same company as me with it, and he was able to help me within minutes. Uh, that would have taken me much longer. Definitely. You know, so asking for help, asking for people with these skills. So for me, for example, if I was doing something in AWS, I only have beginner level knowledge of AWS at the moment. I'd be speaking to someone like you to say, look, I'm struggling with this new thing. Sai, I know you're an expert. Have you seen this before? Can you help me? I mean, that's a really important thing to never be afraid to ask for help. And that's part of my day to day as well. We all help uh, where I work and many other companies of, oh, I, I know Dave's used this before. I, I know Sai's used that before. Uh, let me see if he's seen this problem or can he help me with this? And then together you, you can you can fix things or design things much quicker. But you're right. Connecting the dots is a big help. If you're totally brand new to these things, again, things like the fundamental or beginner level certifications are a really good starting point point to say what is available and again many of these uh these certifications as well come from the point of view of well if you're doing this for a job here is a good practice here's why this is commonly used they help you get that understanding to start with so that's uh that's really useful rather than just assuming you're an expert already it, it really does say okay if you're using this you may use this with this security with this network with this database they, they sometimes give you that initial uh, understanding of how things can connect together. So out of scale uh, 10, so how these uh, certifications that you have done, Microsoft Azure certifications, out of 10, how much time that uh, you think uh, uh, that has been saved because of these certifications in your uh, technology time or as an architect? How much time do, do you think that uh, uh, the 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 uh, clients or the business or the people around you, or people who are learning from you, or people uh, who are getting uh, 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 energy from you or getting contribution from you? How much time? The totality of the time. How much time you have earned by uh, learning these certifications? Yeah, that's a good question as well because. It's a tricky one because learning it is almost like you're you're learning, you know, you're learning how to speak or something like, you know, when you have that knowledge, you're ready to use it straight away. It's not like if someone, you know, asked me a question in, in a different language, uh, you know, I'm like, oh, sorry, I just need to, you know, translate this and find out and then get back to you. I'm just ready to speak straight away. I might not be fluent. I might just know basics, but at least I can connect with them and say, well, look, I know some basics, but you're asking me about a specific thing. Here's some basics. I'll go away and check and I'll get back to you on that. You know, I'll learn. I'll, I'll get a deeper understanding. I'll become more fluent so I can actually have that conversation with you and see, you know, is this is this a good fit for you? So I'd say, you know, as big as it sounds, I would say a 10 out of 10 because there are so many things I've done previously in the career that are massive help. All this experience and varied experience, which is just for me, it, that's invaluable as well. But by taking the certifications, again, whether it be Azure or, uh, or Microsoft or AWS or any others, it, it means that I've filled in gaps. I've learned things I've not understood before. It means that I've, uh, you know, um, used the muscles of learning new things where for so many years, I'll be honest, I, the jobs I've had before where I've done the same thing week in, week out. And, you know, whether it be, say, OK, win forms using C Sharp and SQL Server as a database. And every week I've just used those two things again, 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 again. again. So over months and years, you'll become a master. You'll master it because you do nothing else. You know, that's, you know, 90, 95 percent of my time is spent doing those two tech stacks. 
but I never modernized my skills. I never learned new things of realizing we could make this a web app instead and then they could use it on any device. No, yeah, didn't occur to me because I'd not learned those things. Now that I've learned those things, I know there are other possibilities. Sometimes the client may not be aware. Hey, I need this, you know, this WinForms thing done, but uh, we know people who sometimes want to check on the phone. Could you also do something else? Or oh, why not? Let's just make one thing you could use everywhere. You know, it's having that knowledge of if I didn't know that, I probably would have spent a lot of time trying to research to find a specific answer to that specific problem. But knowing what options are available has just saved so much time and helped me come up with ideas in my head already as I'm talking with the client about what might help them. So again, we can even have the conversation to rule things out. Do you, how about this? No. OK, how about that? No. How about this? Yes. And as we're talking, we're actually coming up with a design as we speak, which which is invaluable, really useful. So the greatest quality that I observed in you uh, today and also in the previous conversation is you are open to learn anything. And especially when you're talking about, uh, uh, I can understand when you're talking about Microsoft Azure certifications, I, I know that uh, the certifications that you have done is, is the proof that you know about this. But I know I can also understand by understanding the thinking uh, way of yours, you can, you understand many things in Microsoft Azure for which you have not done certifications yet. Yeah, exactly right. Even having knowledge of what is possible. And again, that could be other people sharing their knowledge for the presentation. Or as I mentioned before, I'm reading this certification, but they mentioned some advanced concept that says, oh, OK, you could use it like this, but we won't cover that here. And sometimes I'll get curious and think, all oh, right, you know, that sounds interesting. I'll go ahead and check and then go ahead and, you know, maybe read a few articles or some other people have created some great blogs. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. OK, well, I'll try and remember for a future, but I don't need it right now for this exam. But it's nice to know that is possible. So, yeah, as you say, there's so much to learn. I'm always learning, you know, again, you'll never learn it all just because there's too much and it's constantly changing. You know, the hundreds of services available with Azure and AWS uh, and Power Platform and so many other systems, they're just constantly changing and improving and evolving. So, yeah, that that is uh, useful that I do like learning what is possible. I, you know, I'd love to study some AWS and learn more about that. It just so happens that most of my clients were using Microsoft tools at the moment. Um, but, you know, I'm sure there will come a time I'll need to use more AWS than I have done before, which is just some basics, basic to medium so far. Uh, when the time comes, I might consider a certification or just learning. I might not take the exam. I might just learn enough to be useful with it. Um, but, yeah, I've, uh, just as you say, with the connecting the dots, the more I learn, the more things I find can be connectable or they can integrate or there may be a way that they could be useful or the maybe like Azure and AWS or other systems that might be competitors, you know, in some respects with with similar options. But I might choose one over the other because it might be cheaper or that might be faster or that might one be more compliant if they have certain compliance or security uh, standards that they have to meet. So there may be reasons that it's useful to know about them all, well, not all, but uh, many options to pick the favorite one. And it might not always be the Microsoft one, it might not always be the Amazon one. Uh, it might be an open source one. It could be a more expensive one. But knowing that they're available, it means I can then research more when I need to and then choose the, the most appropriate option for a solution. You must be a great time manager because uh, uh, everybody have only 24 hours uh, on the planet. so. How, how you are able to uh, upskill yourself uh, by uh, with, the, with the time that you that you have because uh, you you are trying to learn something always because you have already understood that uh, if I know this I can solve I can easily I can save a lot of time of others instead of asking others about this so you are putting a lot of you are investing a lot of time and on yourself in upskilling yourself. So you must be a great time manager. So how is that is uh, working for you or what are the uh, steps that you are taking to manage to to go the flow like this? Yeah, th well, thank you. It's it, time management is something that I used to think I was really good with. Um, and then sometimes I realized I was maybe just fitting too much in. I was getting too busy and I wasn't making enough uh, time for rest or enough time for play. Or, you know, 
trying to make enough time for work as well as family. You know, there's so many things in life which are important. And I totally agree. 24 hours a day, everyone gets the same. And it's up to you how you choose to share that time. So for me, in recent times, I feel I'm improving the time management and I'm always improving. I'm always trying new things to say, well, it's not just about how much I can cram into it. It's about how I use it well. And I still that's something I need to learn more on. And I'm always learning and experimenting new things. Sometimes I find I've gotten too busy. I need to slow it back. OK, now I don't have enough time to study for this exam in the two weeks. I now need three or four weeks. But that's the choice I make, you know, depending how much I share that time for study, um, you know, uh, whether it's, again, you know, spending time with family or spending time, uh, you know, uh, going away for the weekend or for the day, you know, doing something that is not just work or study or tech. I think it's great to have a good balance of things. And again, I'm, I'm always working on that. So for me, I found a system that works really well for me is if I can commit so much time per day in general for studying, let's say maybe an hour a day or an hour and a half if I have extra time, that's a comfortable limit rather than put myself under pressure thinking I need to do four hours today. You know, that might be the whole evening, all of my breaks, and there's no time for much else. Uh, of course, we need to eat, we need to sleep, we need to rest. You know, Getting a, a right amount of sleep is really important for me as well. You know, that's part of good health for me. So it's that's not something I compromise to make more time for, uh, but that's my personal choice. You know, if, if I have enough sleep and I'm well rested, I am really, you know, much more productive, much healthier, much happier. Some people might try and say reduce their level of uh, sleep or their level of exercise and activity. It's a personal choice, but for me that never works well when I try and reduce that. So for me, if I'm studying for a certification, if I can spend uh, you know an hour or maybe just over an hour per day, um, I try and keep that going Monday to Friday, sometimes into a Saturday if I have the time. I try not to have many breaks. Um, you know, I try and keep Sunday free. Sunday is just a rest day. I don't want to be doing too much studying unless there's anything urgent. I really don't do it then. Um, if I am studying towards something, I find if I keep a regular momentum for two or three weeks or more, um, that works really well for me. But I wouldn't start one, take a week or two off as a holiday and then everyone yeah so we got uh, we got disconnected for some time so i was thinking one question that i was about to ask i forgot it was a very important question i'm trying to get in i forgot it's a great question to oh, if you if you remember again just go ahead I can I can carry with the time management if you like. So again, I, it's a tricky one, but I do find um, it really is like a personal choice. You know, so again, for me, I, there's a certain amount of time with my family, time with exercise and activity. You know, even with the exercise, I could decide I, I do enough that I'm happy with my level. But some people do much, much, much more than me. You know, they, they might do lots of cardio and strength every day and it could be hours and hours every week. I do an amount I'm happy with. I do some. I try and get a good balance. Some people might not, not do much or they're not able to do much. It's, it's personal preference. Uh, you know, it depends what you're able to do as well. But I find if I try and get a good balance with all these different facets of my life, I'm happy if I do too much study and not much of anything else or too much work and not much of anything else. Um, that balance doesn't work well for me. So I always find I have to kind of keep adjusting it and keeping it a level that I'm happy with. So I come to the first category that you said, the people who do more cardio more. So I do more like, you know, <laughs> you are very good in balancing like you. you uh, that's what I understood uh, when you are talking or when you are explaining something or you're very clear and when you you know what exactly you're talking and you know what exactly you're doing and, uh, and uh, i can see so much value in uh, uh, in in the in the words that you say every time 
when i listen so i really enjoy it so much and i got the question that i missed the question is uh, uh, these certifications that you did uh, and you are doing you are also uh, doing so much uh, stuff in, uh, so do you think that uh, the projects that you are you are going to get or the projects that you got already are squeezing the potential that you have you that you earn from these certifications or your learning for new certifications do you think that you will get uh, that challenges that will bring out the maximum potential of yours because yeah, that, yeah. Even, eventually these certifications are for to to solve the problems of the human different problems from different industries Yeah, I completely agree. I do find, uh, you know, learning one thing and putting it into practice are two different things. As you say, I think if I just did, um, I, actually, I'll tell you a story that is related to this because it's a good question. So, as I mentioned before, I, I've had some roles before, and I've had some some great previous roles uh, with other companies, met some great people, and had, you know, I've had a you know i've been very happy with my career i've been very very lucky and privileged to meet some awesome people as well really knowledgeable nice people i've learned so much <clears throat> and that kind of experience throughout the career and throughout life as well not just always in the jobs has really informed how i design things how i empathize with the customer and want to know where are they coming from what are they looking for what's their requirements they might ask for a but they really need b but they don't know b is possible with with an it system you know it's like oh yeah i always do this thing in excel i do it every day and like you know you could do automate that you know you sometimes you know things that they they weren't aware it's even possible so i do feel that the learning is something i do enjoy but i feel the same as you it's it, it's so i'm able to put it into practice because when it's in practice that's when we get the benefits or a client or their organization or my organization would get the benefits if i just had knowledge and never did anything with it <clears throat> that isn't as fulfilling for me personally um it's nice to know i have all these tools and again some of these things i'll be learning that i may never use in a project ever or i might not use it for years you know it might be some obscure database type that i just don't happen to use but the benefit for me is actually using it hands on like oh great that solved a problem for them or that's that's made life easier for them or it saved them money or time or both so i can actually see the benefit and actually when you use it for real that's a whole different fun experience as well because then it's oh that doesn't work quite what i expected or or that costs a bit different than i was led to believe that that that's a little different there or it's not working as expected let me let me work and try and fix this why is that and then you you getting into problem solving then as well you know so that can be interesting but yeah no the story um the story i was going to mention to you uh, the short version is that i've had some great roles before but some of them have been very repetitive and doing similar things or using the same limited tech stack to do the same things again and again Now for those organizations that tech stack worked really well there's no reason for them to modernize or go to cloud computing with azure or aws or use other things but for me personally it wasn't too fulfilling so sometimes i would use side projects or hobbies to learn new things and play with new things create new systems uh, not not to make money necessarily but just to kind of experiment and play with things and it was actually learning those first couple of certifications in a job where I wasn't using those certification skills then made me realize why am i learning this and it is it, it it matches your question really well because i thought well do you keep learning it but never use it and then for me personally what's the point you know do i just learn it and then keep renewing it every year and there's no point because you're never using it or do you just use it on a side project once a year for some small thing and then is it worth spending tens of hours studying for certifications what's the point and then around the time i was thinking about this someone approached me about a job i wasn't looking for a job at the time but someone approached me saying those things you're learning you can use it in a job here and there are other benefits as well working for here you'll use other technology skills we want you to keep learning we'll reward you if you keep taking these certifications and there's lots of other benefits as well of you know more varied projects using power platform and azure and other things as well and i thought well that's why i'm learning it because i want to use it so then i spoke with them and that's how i got the the job i have now is actually i'm using those things that i wanted to be using 
so learning was good, but I think a few more months of learning it but not using it might have been frustrating for me. I, I maybe then would have started looking for a new role, but I was very lucky that a, a, a role came and found me in the end. And uh, what certifications that you want to do in coming days? Yeah, that, that's a good point. So actually during my journey of the, the seven I've achieved so far, um, I've actually changed my approach a couple of times. So first I was going to take just two or three fundamental basics to understand things. And then I was going to take some of these associate and expert levels to kind of increase the, the expertise, my specialism in certain areas, particularly with Azure. Um, now, what I've decided to do in recent uh, recent months is to get all of those fundamentals because Almost all of them are now relevant to my role because I do designs for many different varied systems instead of just, a, you know, it's, it's not just Azure. Some of it's power, a lot of it's power platform for me at the moment. Uh, some of it might be Dynamics 365. So for me, I've taken them all to get this understanding. But after I've completed all the fundamentals that I'm interested in, uh, the next step for me is to really look into Power Platform and Azure, just those two particularly, and increase those. So with Power Platform, there's things like Associate App Maker, which is when you create Power Apps uh, and all the other features and services available. So that's going to be one of the next ones for me um, <clears throat> and Power App Developer as well. So I think Power, Power Apps and Power Platform is my main focus. And then Azure is my secondary focus. They're the main two that I use to architect systems at the moment. So I'm looking to just kind of go more and more advanced with both both of those uh, verticals, they might call them, but both of those technologies. Uh, do you think uh, or do you have any project in your mind that, that uh, can able to bring out uh, all the certifications that you have done and uh, able to put everything in the reality from learning? Any yeah. project? I, I, th I think so. Actually, um, I, I'm working on one at the moment, which really has pushed the knowledge of the certifications I've got so far, um, mostly around the Power Platform. So they, every week I use Power Platform and a lot of the time I use Azure. It's kind of those two of the main two skills that I use. Um, but I, I currently um, I'm currently working on a project that I designed and I'm building myself as well. And it uses lots of the Power Platform. It uses Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI for reports, several different types of reports. Um, and there's also some knowledge of, uh, of Azure, which is useful as well. But this is probably one of the, the biggest solutions that I've designed, which use, you know, uses many of these services and shows how they connect with each other very, very well. Uh, on occasion, I might work on a smaller project and it might just be one service or one database or one feature. And that's fine. You might just target what you need to do. So I worked on one a few months ago that was for a SQL Server database. I needed to improve the performance and there are many different tricks and indexes and profiling and things that I used to solve that very niche specific targeted problem but this was a blank page creating a new system with lots of moving parts reports people who need to use it on the go um, where do we store the data it uses you know uses dataverse for this one so this one encompasses you know many different parts so yeah this has been really worthwhile and the certification has really helped me uh, design and build this system so at last what do you say about uh, microsoft azure technology yeah, so with Azure, um, so one of the, the projects I've worked on recently with Azure, particularly with the data side of things, you know, the way you can host SQL Server databases in many different forms in Azure, that has been key to some of the projects I've worked on as well. But again, it could be a client that's already have one on premises. They've got their own on a server in a box in their office or in a data, their own data center or they may be outsourcing it to a third party data center, but sometimes they might want to use it to Azure. There may be cost savings or it may be easier for them to control it from there. So yeah, sometimes that's been useful to have say an Azure SQL server, but it might be a power app on the front end. And that's a good way it can combine those two different technologies. Again, there's so many other ways that they can all be integrated and connect. So it's useful having that knowledge of many systems instead of just, just a power platform or just Azure. So uh, do you create content as well uh, in order to uh, also teach people uh, how to do certifications or uh, how to get certifications or how to upskill themselves in Microsoft Azure? 
Yeah, I've been really lucky that, you know, a few presentations like this one today, I've done a few similar before for, you know, um, for different user groups and actually internally within my company as well. I hosted a, a I gave a presentation like this, which was just saying, you know, <clears throat> here's where you can find the learning materials. Here are the benefits. Here's where you can get exam vouchers so you can save money as well. They, they were things that I'd learned after my first exam that I wish I'd known. So I would like to share the knowledge so other people can benefit to say, you know, not everyone has money available to spend on an exam. Um, so being able to share that knowledge might mean there are people who can take exams who couldn't before because they couldn't afford it, now have the option to take it. So I've been lucky to, you know, give these kind of presentations, uh, a few of them, and I always do it when I learn something new. OK, there's something new I can share. I'll include it to this this information I've learned so far. Um, I've written a few blog posts as well. Um, I'm also a, a LinkedIn learning instructor as well. So I've actually uh, created a course on there for DP900, which is the Azure Data Fundamentals. Um, there are actually four, four courses on LinkedIn for the full learning for that certification. I've provided the third part of that uh, for that course, uh, that, you know, the collection of four courses. Um, I'm also looking to create more courses online for providers as well, just to help people with these certifications as well. I'm hoping as well, hopefully in the next few months to create some of my own YouTube videos as well. Uh, we'll see again how that time management allows me to fit this in. But if it does, something I've wanted to do for a long time is to give videos to, to show people step by step how you can do these things, you know, how I learn these things, because my approach might work well for them. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping to add more content so it can help more people going forward. But if you do that, definitely thousands of people will get benefit because of your contribution or because of your uh, experience or because of your knowledge. Uh, I, I wish uh, you do that. Uh, uh, somebody from any any country it can be a new learner or who are already uh, doing work or become an expert because there are so many things that uh, I feel that you didn't explore on this side because of the busy schedule of yours. If you do that, definitely I'm going to be the first subscriber. <laughs> oh, thank you, Sai. No, I really appreciate that. And yeah, I appreciate the kind words. I always like sharing the knowledge. If it's useful for other people, I love to share it. I love helping people. You know, I've always felt I'm a people person first, you know, whether it's designing a solution because it helps them, not just because I can put my head down and code it, it's because it's going to help them. Um, and sharing the knowledge is, is the same thing. You know, we, you know, I know you and I, we do this, you know, because we enjoy sharing that knowledge, helping others, other people help us. You know, I know there's many other people on, on YouTube and online who've helped me with certification, you know, you know uh, places they found learning materials or they share their... <clears throat> their approach to learning, which has helped me as well. So yeah, I just like to think we're, we're all in it together in a big community and it's a good positive space. We can all help each other. Uh, I'll put your links and also the information about the, the certifications that you have done in my website. Also, I'll put your links on the description in this video on YouTube, also on the screen, whatever I can put uh, in the space that I have in the screen, I'll put it, whatever you have earned so that people who watches or listens to you definitely it will be a very, very helpful thing because a lot of people wants to come into Azure and wants to upskill themselves. Or expert like you saying this very clearly how things work. I try to explore it as much as possible in the limited time that you gave me. So even some points of yours will, if, if that helps or helps them to uh, uh, go from one to 10 or one to seven or one to five, that will be a great contribution. And uh, it's not enough. But still, it's a very big contribution. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And yeah, I'd be happy to share anything so far specifically with these certifications. Um, and yeah, anyone who's considering them, again, whether it's the Microsoft ones or not, that happens to be my speciality, again, based on my career, my choices, uh, you know, partially with the company I work for, which is a Microsoft partner. But honestly, AWS, you know, um, Cisco, if you're learning security, uh, CompTIA, uh, VMware, you know, they've been around for a long time. What you what you want to be using, what you're using now or what you want to use in a future job or for a future promotion, you know, I would highly recommend them. Again, even just learning it, you don't, you know, taking the exam and getting the 
the certificate is obviously you know a, a level above but if you don't have time to take an exam or the money but you just want to learn new things there's a lot of great free learning material out there that will help you your job your organization you know achieve those goals and and learn what is possible you know learn the options available so yeah i'd highly recommend it and if anyone takes the exams then then best of luck it's a great thing and uh, at last uh, i asked the question before also what do you say about my work and uh, my questioning in this conversation <laughs> No, I think it was great. Again, Sai, you know, it's great being on the show again. And I really appreciate you having me back. And I think I think just keep doing what you're doing. I know you will because I know you're productive and you keep putting content out there, which is great. But what I like is that you're asking good questions. It's not just boring, obvious questions, you know, such as, you know, you've got 24 hours a day like everyone else how do you do time management yeah it's a great question and not everyone speaks about that some people see people with lots of certifications or create lots of blogs and youtube videos and i was one of these people early on before i created content thinking they're like a superhero because i don't know how they put hours and hours of content every week and hold a job and have a family and do this 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 so i used to think well how do they do that but you're asking those good questions but also you're asking good questions that I think will be helpful for your audience and for people watching is they're not just a fun question. It's if, you know, someone wants to learn, where do you start? You know, what motivates me to do it? Um, what benefit in your day job are you getting by doing this? And so other people are thinking, should I do this? They're now hearing my answers and it might be similar to their answers too. So yeah, keep on going. I'm, I'm loving the show. I, I keep watching and listening too. So how uh, uh, learning from you now, like this, also experts like you, whatever the way, the style of mine, how this uh, learning uh, uh, resource that I created, how this experience is going to be helpful for me in, in IT, if I work in as a DevOps engineer, if I work? Yeah, I think so. I think, I think one of the biggest things is asking these questions and meeting people and, and and asking this is because you know you could ask 10 other architects and developers these same questions and you'll likely get completely different answers so the great thing is that when you're asking lots of different people and sometimes people from different industries as i know you've done before you know whether work in movies or whatever they work in you know you're getting those different perspectives and for me selfishly as I've mentioned, for my career, those years of working in different industries in different countries, I've worked in a few now, I've lived in a few, I've been very lucky. I've worked for lots of different sectors and different companies, whether they be a small startup, a mid-sized company, or even big multinational enterprises. That's all informed my knowledge. That's all been experience that I could draw upon. Um, and I've used that, you know, I can use that to my advantage, uh, you know, it, anyone can use their career to their advantage but i use it to mind say oh i could actually you know transfer that skill from that one to here that that could be useful here and for me that's more interesting for me than doing the same thing every day every day every day but that again that's just my personal preference so i think one you're going to be learning all these different approaches and different skills and some of them might click with you better than others you you might ask another architect and they, they might actually might have some advice which is totally different from mine, but it might be better for you. It might be a better fit and that's totally fine. It's whatever works. Um, but of course, as well, you know, sharing this content with others, you're helping others. They might reach out to you and say, well, I've got an interesting perspective. Can I be on your show? Or thanks, I, you know, I, I, I watched that episode and then I passed my first certification because you're asking these great questions. So you could find that's useful. Um, but also, you know, if, if future employers and organizations see your content, they'll see you're asking good questions, you're intelligent, you know what you're talking about. So this is kind of part of your portfolio as well. So yeah, it's useful in many ways. So it, it really a belt for me, your words, definitely it will help me a lot for sure. So thanks again, Naketa, for your valuable time and sharing your valuable uh, experience and how uh, you are able to do so many certifications in the limited time that you have and also telling from the beginning to the export level that you have done. So that's a great thing. So can I put this video on my YouTube channel with your permission? 
Yeah, please do. And this has been my pleasure. Thanks for your time, too. You know, with as you say, time's precious. We all have the same amount. So, uh, yeah, no, thank you. Thanks for the, having me back again and for sharing this with your audience and, and everyone. It's, you know, I think it's valuable, you know, y your thoughts and my thoughts and, you know, uh, and other people's thoughts as well. But, yeah, please do share it and uh, feel free to tag me and I'll, I'll share it, too. Yeah. And also, can I put this in my um, audio and video clip on my podcast website, internet, social media, everywhere with your permission? Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Kate. Uh, keep inspiring like this. Thank you. You too. Keep up the great work and uh, I look forward to your next shows. Thanks. Sir. Take care. Excellent. Take care. Bye, Sai. Bye.